remember the story from a few weeks ago about a forgotten Brie Larson movie that someone tried to erase from the internet? The movie came out just a month before Captain Marvel and it was quickly buried. They couldn't just let this movie tarnish the release of Captain Marvel. Then, you know, a bunch of YouTube commentary channels reported on it, including me. Apparently, there were no articles written about it, and the trailer was wiped from YouTube, and it was all, it was all, it was all blown out of proportion, of course. The trolls uh, uh, dropped the story once it failed to generate clicks, because, you know, it, it, it wasn't really that big of a deal. But no one actually bothered to watch the movie, they just read the reviews and said that it was racist and had a white savior complex and it was super terrible. Because it was fun to, to kind of hate on Brie Larson because of, you know, the stuff that went on surrounding the Captain Marvel uh, uh, premiere. But, like I said, no one actually bothered to watch the movie to see if it really was bad enough that it could hurt Brie Larson's reputation. No one except for me. So in this episode of Please Don't Make a Scene, we review Basmati Blues. Linda Watt is a biologist who has been developing a new kind of rice, more nutritious and much more resistant to pests and weather. The company she works for, Mogul Industries, sends her to India where she is tasked to sell this new rice to all the farmers. She is quickly enamored with the beauty and culture of India, but Mogul has a hidden agenda and Watt is only a pawn in their game. So let's quickly dispel the myth here. Let's let's kill the meme, if there ever was one. Uh, Basmati Blues is not the worst movie ever made. What it is, is a horribly generic rom-com that tries to be more than just that by shoving in this plot of a scientist from, from corporate America coming to India and realizing that there is much more to the world than just science. The movie is very formulaic. I, I know, I, I often talk about structure and how much I, I like structure in movies, but not every genre needs to follow such a strict formula. The romantic comedy genre is one that needs to reinvent itself, because every rom-com pretty much follows the exact same uh, formula. Because it works, you know? It works. But Basmati Blues was so predictable that it was laughable. But the structure isn't the worst part of the movie. The musical numbers are... <sighs> In an attempt to stick out from the genre, Basmati Blues adds several musical numbers that are just so cringy. They never go all out and make them proper musical numbers. The songs are fine, but there are no complex dance numbers or even any cool sequences where they, you know, run through a fantasy land or, you know, anything that breaks the, 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 the reality illusion or what I'm going to call it. It's just Brie Larson walking around and singing to herself, dancing half-heartedly. That's it. Couple this with a really unnecessary triangle drama, and you have a very messy and sometimes choppy rom-com. And now, let's get to what everyone wants to hear about. The racism. I've mentioned this before. I am not the most racially sensitive person around here. And while I do think that some of the things that happen in Basmati Blues are kind of awkward and feel a little insensitive, I, I I wouldn't call the movie racist. That's just me, though. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think the movie is blatantly racist. Not the depiction of India or the, the, the depiction of Indians. The only character that feels a little racist is the owner of Mogul Industries, uh, played by Donald Sutherland. He is the villain, the, the capitalist. So I actually don't mind him being a little racist. He's supposed to be a bad guy, you know? So that, 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 that's kind of the point. What I do find to be the most offensive is the fact that Brie Larson's character is the one that ultimately saves the poor Indian farmers from becoming financial slaves to the mean, mean mad, mad white, white man. man. I definitely understand why her character feels responsible, because, you know, she was involved in actually getting them into this, this very bad deal. And, you know, she wants to help the farmers out of this in the end. But why does she literally 
ride in on a white horse and stop the evil white man from stealing all their crops. When the second main character, the love interest, played by Utkarsh Ambudkar, uh, is a college-educated agriculture biologist from India that is critical of this big company trying to muscle their way into the farmers' lives and their, their, their crops. You know, and he's, he's being critical and suspicious from the very beginning. So why not make him the hero? He, he's trying to show Brie Larson the error of her ways, but she completely ignores him because of the, 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 the romantic plot. And it isn't until she discovers it by herself that she understands what she's doing is wrong. So when people say that this movie suffers from a white savior complex, mm, I'll, I'll agree to that a little bit. Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, you could definitely uh, put, you know, have have a white savior in your movie if you want to. You just gotta be tactful about it. Basmati Blues is anything but tactful. It's kind of blunt and stupid, really. So, um, just like in real life, Brie Larson wants to be the good guy and, and help all the marginalized people of the world. But her methods come off as extremely tone deaf and blunt, and it just ruins a movie that wasn't really that good to begin with, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, that's about Ma Basmati Blues. Um, I don't want to drag this on. I mean, the, the meme, if there ever was one, uh, died a long time ago, and I'm just doing this because I promised to review the movie a couple of weeks back. So uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Basmati Blues. Um, would it have ruined uh, uh, the reputation of Brie Larson or Captain Marvel if it came out just one month before Captain Marvel? <sighs> Maybe, but it wouldn't have had a big impact. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have impacted the, the release of Captain Marvel at all. I think. I mean, yes, it would be a little weird that that Brie Larson would star in two movies with only a month uh, in between the releases. So yeah, I can see why Disney wanted to push Basmati Blues out of the way. To, to, to make way for their big billion dollar project. I get that. But that's my spot, Basmati Blues. It's in the bag. Um, leave a like if you like this review. Leave a dislike if, you, if you're if you a Brie Larson fan and love everything she does. Or if you just dislike the video. But if you like the video and you want to see more in-depth reviews or, or, or podcasts... Uh, 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 live streams, uh, trailer reactions, or whatever video I decide to make on any given day, be sure to hit the uh, subscribe button and the little bell thing so you're always updated when I release a new video. But it's basically every day now, so, you know, you could just check in every day. But still, I, I value your subscriptions very much. But that's gonna have to be it. I uh, will see you in the next one. But until then, have a good one. So what? I like one of the songs. I'm allowed to.